Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Morning Dew Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on November 3rd, 2021. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Dew, where we have a look at and update you on space weather, world weather, and as well, earthquakes, volcanoes. Looking at the last 48 hours, 304 angstroms of our sun, brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory, and we did just have an M-class flare but it was not in an earth-facing position. We are going through some space weather right now from the last few events over the past few days. Looking at incoming imagery right now, see that large plasma solar tornado and as well a dying out sunspot behind it. A lot of the action today was on the backside of the sun, not in an earth facing direction a pretty active outgoing sunspot there that produced the X class and as well M class and quick look at this area here sunspot in the center plasma filament to the right ripping away and then watch for that flare M class flare that just erupted earlier today. Looking at multi-spectrum, you can see all of the events. Outgoing, a little bit of earth facing, and it is not on the ISPA spiral just yet. But we had that large plasma filament rip away from the sun just beside that in this region. Amazing imagery coming out of Solar Dynamics Observatory. And here we're looking for any dark regions, meaning a coronal hole. And we have no coronal holes in an Earth-facing position. We could see something developing in the next couple days, though. Having a look at our geospace magnetosphere cut planes, this is our solar wind at over 600 kilometers per second, up to almost 800 kilometers per second at one point. But look at that. Wow, amazing imagery coming out of NOAA today with the geospace magnetosphere. Looking at our pressure planes. Whoa. We got smacked around today by our solar winds over 700 kilometers per second. And they've been jacked up over 500 for the past couple of days now due to all of the sun events that we've been receiving the last week now in full effect looking at the density here so our real-time solar wind right now is just over 700 kilometers per second but we were steady at over 500 kilometers 729 kilometers per second and being it seeing a big sporadic zigzag in the density particles and temperature is rising you can see here solar x-ray flux was just under the m class flare so that was a c class flare let me correct myself but we are currently under a geo a strong geomagnetic storm schumann resonance for today a power of nine Pretty low power and a little bit of missing data there. Quality of 9.6, a power of 9. Those little green bars means that's good energies. Let's have a look at earthquakes for the past 24 hours across the USGS globe here. We're going to start out here with an active west coast of North America. 4.4 reported here in Petrolia early this morning at a 29 kilometer depth, followed by a 3.4 and a few smaller earthquakes in the region. But that is right by the geysers, my friends. That's a lot of pressure being released there. As well, a 4.5 here in La Libertad, Mexico, and as well, a 4.3 followed shortly thereafter. So the Gulf of California going off today, and as well, Petrolia, California. 4.3 here in Revilla Gigedo Islands. 
Yeah, Gigetto Islands region at a 10 kilometer depth. Riviera Plate. Pretty quiet across most of central United States. No major swarms to talk about. But duly noted here in the Gulf of California with La Libertad. Mexico, 4.5 and as well up 4.3. Looking across the USGS, you can see there are no major swarms to talk about. Minor activity around Los Angeles. Minor activity through Ridgecrest. And as well, increasing activity towards San Francisco. No major concerns through Yellowstone. A couple minor earthquakes, Idaho. And then a couple minor earthquakes here up into the Cascades. Ashford, Washington, that's Mount St. Helen. Other than that, as I said, no major swarms to talk about. We're looking at 267 earthquakes across the USGS map last 24 hours which is slightly above average we'll carry on here around the map quiet through puerto rico today only seeing two earthquakes quiet through south american plate after starting the day with a 5.7 los andes chile at 110 kilometer depth quickly followed by 5.7 gorontalo 4.9 here South Sandwich Islands as well. Give you a quick update on La Palma as well, as they saw another 5.0 magnitude earthquake, and that was reported about 15 hours ago, so early, early this morning. November 3rd, a 5.0, and as well, a 4.0. Through the region, they're still seeing a lot of minor activity. But it seems that the earthquakes are getting bigger, over the past week so heads up stay safe aware and prepared and thoughts and prayers going out to everybody affected by the earthquakes the lava and of course the ash fall from this large volcanic eruption la palma island looking at nasa worldview right here we're going to go back to october 29th or 28th where it had an eruption yet again large ash and SO2 plume coming off of La Palma. The wind's really tossing it around each day, northward, westward, eastward, and then southeastward. And then all of this ash is forecasted to be deposited through Morocco. Look at the volcanic activity report for that. As well, Greece seeing a 4.3, and as well, Serbia a 3.9. Pretty quiet through African and into the European plate. 5.1 Sibolga, Indonesia, and as well Sinabang, 4.7. Quiet through western parts of the Ring of Fire right now. Ternate, Indonesia, 4.5, and as well a 4.9. One lonely 4.5 here to report in Nago, Japan, 186 kilometer depth south of the Japan Islands, and as well Iwaki, Japan, 4.6 at 48 kilometer depth. Down into Fiji here, 5.7, that's the earthquake that echoed just after the 5.7 in Chile, 35 kilometer depth, that was around the same time as that large 5.7 early this morning. Deepest earthquake today, 517 kilometer depth, 4.4 earthquake, Fiji, quiet through the Kermadex, not too bad through Hawaii, but they did see a sizable 3.4 there, Pahala. And quiet, eerily quiet through Alaska. And that's the last 24 hours for earthquakes. Have a quick look here, the last seven days. A quick browse while I thank each and every one of you for tuning in and as well subscribing to Morning Dew Daily Events Worldwide, keeping humanity aware and prepared. I want to thank all of memberships helping support the channel. I want to thank all of the donators, all of the mods. Personally, I want to thank each and every one of the viewers. Thank you for all the shares. Thank you for all the likes. This is a map of the last seven days for earthquakes. 
still expecting some activity through the Cascades. Much love, everybody. Let's have a look at the Pacific Disaster Center, showing the most recent volcanoes getting updated. Looking at Simaru, Indonesia, as well Manam, Papua New Guinea. The two most recent, La Palma in, in Spain, Nevada de Ruiz, Colombia, Reventador in Ecuador, Fuego, Guatemala, Sabancaya in Peru, Swiss Najima, Japan, Kermiski, Russia, Kadavor, Papua New Guinea, Era in Japan, Semis Napochnoi, United States, Sangay in Ecuador, Ibu, Indonesia, Shevlich, Russia, Dakona, Dakono, Indonesia. So that's about 15 volcanoes getting updated just today. We have an active and erupting 49 volcanoes across the world. Also giving you a quick view here at Tropical Storm Wanda. Still spinning around here in the Atlantic Ocean. Pretty erratic path of that storm. Stormy conditions across eastern United States as well Mexico. British Columbia seeing some stormy conditions. Days of rain. They got quite the rain train. Atmospheric river of moisture totally penetrating that coastline right now. Quick look over the Pacific and as well Australia as they've had a pretty wild week ahead of them too. New Zealand seeing some storms reported two days ago and as well Victoria, Australia. And watch for these conditions to continue throughout the coming weeks. Let's have a look at the five-day forecast brought to you by MediaWorth and daily events worldwide. Starting out here, home base, Brantford, Ontario, where it was very cool this morning. Minus one this morning, and we did have flurries overnight. Some regions just north of us, about 20 kilometers north of us, saw five centimeters of flurries. Snow squalls coming off of Lake Huron. So let's carry on here with the forecast as we do have a system that will be grazing the coastline through South and North Carolina and into New York. Other than that, big high pressure ridge locked over Eastern Canada and the United States, drying things out. And then we've got a cold high coming from the North, of course, which is going to cool things down from West to East in the long range forecast. But look at Vancouver, one, two, three systems affecting you this week atmospheric river of moisture penetrating you guys that right now and then watch for these big systems in the long range forecast to affect coast of oregon and washington overlooking the atlantic tropical storm wanda looks like he's going to get wrapped up with the downgraded tropical system that comes off the coastline there and get dragged into the north pole iceland and greenland Overlooking Europe the next few days, low pressure system moving out and then high pressure for western parts of Europe. But then watch for a Mediterranean low here to, to develop coming out of Africa. You could see some pretty rainy and warm conditions come out of that system. Overlooking Russia, Southeast Asia, big wintry mess across Russia right now very large low pressure system right here and it is dropping a lot of snow looking at nasa worldview half of russia is already covered in snow big system here developing for north and south korea as well watch for an extreme weather event for them as they could see some pretty heavy snow and really stormy conditions strong winds with those systems overlooking the Indies, low pressure system still running up the west coast of India. Daily evaporation rains continue to be heavy. Overlooking Australia, you can see a low pressure system still bringing in waves of moisture across the continent. Overlooking the Pacific Ocean, no major systems affecting Hawaii this week, but watching those Tropical systems come out of Japan, heading into the atmospheric river of moisture here, heading to the coast of Washington and British Columbia. 
So a rainy week ahead of BC and a dry week ahead for eastern parts of Canada. Overlooking South America, no major developments since yesterday's forecast. Africa, no major weather systems affecting you this week. You do have a low encroaching into parts of Cape Town and southeast Africa in the long-range forecast. Other than that, no major weather systems affecting or developing along the equator. Going to leave you here looking at the southern hemisphere versus the northern, pointing out the major systems spinning around both of our hemispheres. I want to thank again everybody for watching. Prayers for humanity. Thank you so much. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun. And get your morning due. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.